не учим, а практикуем. Играем в английский от души. Свободный мощный тренажер. Оксин Лишбот. Телеграм. Я уже давно желал увидеть весь мой остров. I had long wished to see the whole of my island. Так что одним прекрасным утром. So, one fine morning. Я пустился путешествовать через него до другого берега. I set out to travel across to the other side of it. Конечно, я нес мое ружье с собой. Of course I carried my gun with me. На ремне у меня был мой лучший топорик. In my belt was my best hatchet. В патронной сумке. In my pouch. У меня было много пороха и дроби. I had plenty of powder and shot. В кармане было два печенья и большая гость изюма. In my pocket were two biscuits and a big bunch of raisins. Моя собака следовала за мной. My dog followed behind me. Я прошел мимо летнего дома. I went past my summer house. Или беседки. Or bower. И к вечеру пришел на красивое открытое место, близко к морю. And toward evening came to a fine open place close by the sea. Это был красивый вид. It was a beautiful sight. Небо было ясным, воздух спокойным. The sky was clear, the air was still. Тихие воды. The smooth waters. Тянулись вдаль и вдаль по направлению к заходящему солнцу. Stretched away and away toward the setting sun. Далеко на расстоянии. Far in the distance. Я мог видеть землю. I could see land. Я не мог сказать, был ли это остров или часть континента Америки. I could not tell whether it was an island or some part of the mainland of America. Это было по меньшей мере в 50 милях. It was at least 50 miles away. Если бы это был материк. If it were the mainland. Я был совершенно уверен. I felt quite sure. Что в какое-либо время или другое я увижу корабль, плывущий сюда к нему или от него. That I would at some time or other see a ship sailing hither to it or from it. Если это был остров, If it were an island, 
Там могли быть дикари. There might be savages, которых для меня было бы небезопасно встретить. Whom it would not be safe for me to meet. Не было смысла беспокоить мой ум вопросами о подобных вещах. But it would do no good to worry my mind about such matters. Я обнаружил, что эта сторона острова была намного красивее, чем та, где был мой замок. I found this side of the island much more beautiful than that where my castle was. Здесь были большие открытые поля, зеленые травы. Here were large open fields, green with grass. И приятные от цветов. And sweet with flowers. Здесь также были отличные рощи с множеством странных деревьев и вьющихся растений. Here, too, were fine woods, with many strange trees and vines. Я увидел много зеленых попугаев среди деревьев. I saw many green parrots among the trees. И подумал, как бы мне поймать одного и научить его говорить. And I thought how I would catch one and teach it to talk. После множества трудностей я сбил одного молодого палкой. After a great deal of trouble, I knocked a young one down with my stick. Он был хорошим бойцом. He was a good fighter. И было непростым делом заполучить его. And it was no easy matter to get him. Но в конце концов я подобрал его и положил в свою сумку. But at last I picked him up and put him in my bag. Он не был ранен. He was not hurt. И я отнес его домой. And I carried him home. Прошло много времени, прежде чем я заставил его говорить. It was a long time before I could make him talk. Но в конце концов он стал прекрасным питомцем. But at last he became a great pet. И называл меня по имени. And would call me by my name. Я расскажу смешную историю о нем через некоторое время. I shall have a funny story to tell about him after a while. Кроме попугаев, там было много других птиц в лесу. Besides parrots, there were many other birds in the woods. Некоторые из них были видов, которых я никогда раньше не видел. Some of these were of kinds that I had never seen before.
На низких землях я видел некоторых животных, которые выглядели как кролики. In the low grounds I saw some animals that looked like rabbits. Там были другие, которых я принимал за лис. There were others that I took to be foxes. Но они были не такими лисами, какие у нас в Англии. But they were not such foxes as we have in England. Я путешествовал очень медленно по острову. I traveled very slowly around the island. Так как хотел увидеть все. For I wished to see everything. Часто я не проходил более двух миль в день. Often I did not go more than two miles in a day. Ночью я иногда спал на дереве. At night I sometimes slept in a tree. В то время, как моя собака охраняла внизу. While my dog watched below me. Иногда я скрывался в маленьком загончике, сделанном посредством вбивания длинных палок в землю. Sometimes I shut myself up in a little pen made by driving tall stakes into the ground. Я чувствовал себя вполне в безопасности. I felt quite safe. Так как ничто не могло приблизиться ко мне без того, чтобы разбудить меня. For nothing could come near me without waking me. Вдоль берега были тысячи черепах. Along the seashore there were thousands of turtles. И множество водоплавающих птиц. And a great plenty of waterfowl. У меня не было трудностей с нахождением всей той еды, в которой я испытывал потребность. No Иногда у меня был жареный голубь на обед. Sometimes I had a roast pigeon for dinner. Иногда сочное мясо черепахи. Sometimes the juicy meat of a turtle. Иногда мясо козы. Sometimes meat of a goat. Никакой король не мог бы поесть лучше. No king could have fared better. Однажды собака поймала козленка. One day my dog caught a goatling. Я побежал и схватил его. I ran and got hold of it. И не позволил ей ранить его. And would not let her hurt it. У меня было большое желание взять его домой с собой. I had a great mind to take it home with me. Поэтому я сделал для него ошейник. So I made a collar for it. 
и отвел его на веревке, которая была у меня в кармане. And led it along by a string which I had in my pocket. Он был довольно диким. It was quite wild. Он доставил мне так много трудностей, что я отвел его в летний дом и оставил там. It gave me so much trouble that I took it to my summer house and left it there. Затем я ушел домой в мой замок. I then went home to my castle. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Robinson Crusoe written anew for children by James Baldwin. Chapter 22 I Make a Long Journey. I had long wished to see the whole of my island, so one fine morning I set out to travel across to the other side of it. Of course I carried my gun with me. In my belt was my best hatchet. In my pouch I had plenty of powder and shot. In my pocket were two biscuits and a big bunch of raisins. My dog followed behind me. I went past my summer house or bower, and toward evening came to a fine open place close by the sea. It was a beautiful sight. The sky was clear the air was still. The smooth water stretched away and away toward the setting sun. Far in the distance I could see land. I could not tell whether it was an island or some part of the mainland of America. It was at least fifty miles away. If it were the mainland, I felt quite sure that I would at some time or other see a ship sailing hither to it or from it. If it were an island, there might be savages on it, whom it would not be safe for me to meet. But it would do no good to worry my mind about such matters. I found this side of the island much more beautiful than that where my castle was. Here were large open fields, green with grass and sweet with flowers. Here too were fine woods with many strange trees and vines. I saw many green parrots among the trees, and I thought how I would catch one and teach it to talk. After a great deal of trouble, I knocked a young one down with my stick. He was a good fighter, and it was no easy matter to get him, but at last I picked him up and put him in my bag. He was not hurt, and I carried him home. It was a long time before I could make him talk, but at last he became a great pet and would call me by my name. I shall have a funny story to tell about him after a while. Besides parrots, there were many other birds in the woods. Some of these were of kinds that I had never seen before. In the low grounds I saw some animals that looked like rabbits. There were others that I took to be foxes but they were not such foxes as we have in England. I traveled very slowly around the island, for I wished to see everything. Often I did not go more than two miles in a day. At night I sometimes slept in a tree, while my dog watched below me. Sometimes I shut myself up in a little pen, made by driving tall stakes into the ground. I felt quite safe, for Nothing could come near me without waking me. Along the seashore there were thousands of turtles and a great plenty of waterfowl. I had no trouble to find all the food I needed. Sometimes I had a roast pigeon for dinner, sometimes the juicy meat of a turtle, sometimes that of a goat. No king could have fared better. One day my dog caught a young kid. I ran and got hold of it, and would not let him hurt it. 
I had a great mind to take it home with me, so I made a collar for it and led it along by a string which I had in my pocket. It was quite wild and did not lead well. It gave me so much trouble that I took it to my summer house and left it there. I then went home to my castle. Chapter 23 I Harvest My Grain I cannot tell you how glad I was to get to my old house again and lie down in my good old hammock bed. I had been away for nearly a month. I was so tired from my long journey that I stayed in my castle nearly a week. While I was thus resting myself, I made a cage for my parrot, which I named Paul. He was very gentle for a parrot, and soon became very fond of me. Then I began to think of the kid that I had left in my summer bower, so I went with my dog to fetch it. I found it where I had left it. It had eaten all the grass inside of the fence, and was now very hungry. I gave it as much as it wished, and then I tied the string to it to lead it away. But there was no need of that, for it was quite tame. It followed me everywhere. It was very gentle and loving. I now had a number of pets, and was no longer lonesome. My life was much happier than it had been while I was sailing the seas. I took delight in many things that I had never cared for before. My barley and rice had grown well, and in another month would be ready to be harvested. But one day I saw that some animals had been in the field. Goats and rabbits had trampled upon the green stalks, and had eaten the long blades of barley. If things kept on this way, I should lose my grain. There was nothing to be done but to build a fence or hedge round the field. This was easy, for the field was not large. I drove tall stakes into the ground all around my growing crops. These stakes were so close together that not even a rabbit could get between them. Then I tied my dog near the gate of the little field, so that he would bark whenever any animal came near. My grain was now safe from the beasts. It grew fast. The barley sent out large heads, which soon began to ripen. But now the birds came down in great flocks to rob me. They sat on the fence. They flew among the stalks of grain. They carried away all the ripe barley they could find. This troubled me very much. The most of the grain was still green, but I feared that as soon as it ripened I should lose it all. I loaded my gun and went out to the field. There I saw the thieves, sitting on the fence and watching me. I was so angry that I fired right among them and killed three. Now I will show you how to steal my grain, I cried. I put up a long pole in the center of the field, and on top of it I hung the three dead birds. This I will do to all that ventured to come into my field, I said. Strange to say, this ended all my troubles. Not another bird came to that place so long as my scarecrows hung there. In fact, the birds went away from that part of the island, and I did not soon see another. <laughs>